I'm Mark Cuevas and welcome to New Media Weekly. Today I'm speaking with Mike Ghetto, festival director of the New York Television Festival. How long has the festival been going on and what's, what's the mission? We've been in existence since 2005, so this is our eighth year okay. at the festival. And its mission really, it's, it's sort of evolved over the years, but in its simplest form, it was to open doors to new creators to new producers of television content. So in the same way that independent film with Sundance and all the subsequent festivals after that opened up the film market to independent creators, that's what we do. So networks, agencies, studios, they're all our partners. So people submit content to us, we then serve that up to all our partners and they make deals. Now, that was the initial model. It's evolved over the years to where we're doing direct development for these network partners. So that Lifetime will tell us, this is exactly what we want. We want a non-scripted format that appeals to this demo that has these features. Go get it. And we'll do a separate competition just for those things, in addition to the wide competition for everything. And, you know, in 2005, there was no YouTube. Right. So when we started, it was really about producing television. And there was a much more rigid sense of what that was in comparison to everything else. Right, there was the format of the pilot, 22 minutes or exactly. 45 minutes. Exactly, exactly. Right. I mean, in the first year, we, we took hour-long dramas, which were, that was an amazing thing to try to do, to say, <laughs> let's sit through an hour of an independently produced drama pilot. But as it's evolved, we lowered the times down because in television and out, we, we started getting a lot of new media sponsors as well. My Damn Channel came on, and they were looking for content specific to them. So we said, all right, it doesn't have to, it's not defined by a time. That's not what we're about. It's de defined by the serial nature of the content. Anything that's got a second episode, or could have a second episode, and a third episode, anything is that is that, so web series, come on down. So we lowered our times down to four minutes. So basically, some of the competitions range. We've had competitions that go as low as two minutes for minimum length, but usually it's between four and 22 minutes. That's what we're looking for to evaluate your content. And we're usually just looking for the beginning because it's, again, not a film festival. Right. It's not a finished product that you can then just sell and off you go. This is the very, very beginning. So you should have been a pilot to us, even if it's in web series form. This is the beginning of an idea that a network like IFC can come in and look at that and go, even if it was a web series, go, all right, I see that. You've developed characters, you've developed a story, you have a world here, and you have a point of view. Come with us, and we're going to make a TV show out of that. So that's sort of what we do. We, our entire mission is to get all of these fantastic creators that have all these new ideas that don't necessarily have access to agents or studios or networks and set them up with all these networks and agents and studios that are desperate for new ideas. So from both sides, we're a really useful platform of bringing those people together, setting them down and go, go make awesome stuff. And that's what we do. So since its inception, I mean, obviously with the introduction of YouTube and, and just the broadening of the horizons, what else have you noticed uh, has changed in the landscape of, of the submissions? I think the main thing is just that all our partners, they didn't really know what they were necessarily getting. And to see where their, their focus has gone from a content standpoint, from those first years where I think they, they had a much more rigid view of what television the content should be for TV. Whereas now, it can be anything that is the spark that is the thing that they latch on to. It can be, yeah, reality TV has, it just keeps exploding. Right. You know, one, one new succession onto another, and it can be as much as a casting tape now that launches an entire series. And, you know, just an interesting person. A guy who's fascinating, who's got a crazy job and a crazy mom, and great, let's get this guy a show. Like, so <laughs> in terms of what can spark a television series or a web series that is funded by somebody else. So that it's not something that you're just putting up, but like, it's, it's sort of amazing to see where the ideas can come from and how a network or a portal can take the idea and 
blow it up. So I think that they've expanded their, their thinking in terms of how to develop. So now that you, you know, the spectrum has opened up, what have you seen that, that is trending? What has become more frequent? On the website, it's everything. Like in terms of web series, I don't, I don't see a pattern developing in terms of the type of content we get. We get non-scripted content, we get scripted content, we get sci-fi web series, we get, you know, roommate web series, like it's across the board. So with such a broad area now from the web shows, if it's not specifically what it's about, what has been something that you've noticed that's changed since web shows started coming in? Well, they're getting better. Okay. They're like, in terms of, uh, in terms of the technical quality, it's, it's not even close. Like, like years. every year, it just, they blow you away. Like, we'll get a web series that looks as good as a feature film that could go up on an IMAX screen. Like, like incredibly high quality in terms of the technical aspects. And one thing that is also really nice is the writing is getting better. You know, I, I the th it's tricky with web series because especially if they're created as a web series, in some ways it's closer to film because if I'm gonna set out to make a web series, I'm setting out to make, even if it's only three or four episodes, a finished product that is meant to be consumed the way it is. So there's, there's a higher expectation of what that is going to be in terms of the writing, the acting, the technique, because it's supposed to be finished. Whereas a pilot, it's, it's more forgiving because it's, yeah. it's supposed to be now further developed. It's supposed to be expanded and maybe recast and maybe whatever. There's, so you're sort of looking at different things potentially when you're evaluating the, the, a, a TV pilot versus a web series. So what's tricky for our job is because ultimately we want, whether it's a web series or a, sit or a, uh, a, a full p pilot or a format tape, our, our goal is always the same, is to help that artist sell up to a buyer that's then, no matter what you've got, going to redo it in some way. So that even when we look at the web series and we say, that's not quite baked, it's almost there. That, that particular one is, he's almost got it. He just needs a little help. And so it, it's, it's tricky with the web series, but I have noticed that by and large, they are getting stronger in terms of the development. I mean, I think because they don't have the funding necessarily, especially if it's an independently produced web series, they don't have the funding behind them to do as much development as you would do in a traditional TV model. And there are problems with the traditional TV model, maybe, or things that could be done better, but that that step-by-step -step process of really working on something, not just going, eh, we did two weeks of pre-production, let's go shoot it. They're, they're, we're seeing more being put into the web series on the front end. So what, what you're seeing is greater craftsmanship and preparation instead of just the DIY. Exactly. You know. And more development. like. The idea that development is not a dirty word. It's not just a money suck. It can be, <laughs> but like that's where you can really, and the same thing with the idea of network notes. Having somebody that you can answer to creatively, even if it's just a partner. You know, we get so many amazing one-man band style web series or pilots that, you know, he's the writer, creator, director, actor, and that's fantastic, but at the same time, Having that other force, whether it's a network or a studio or a buyer or even a creative partner that can tell you, justify that. Like, let's think about that, let's take it back. And you know, that's part of the development process too. And we're seeing more of that in the web series now where people are really shooting higher, aiming higher with the, the, the craft of what they're doing. It's forcing them to become professional or more professional. Exactly. As opposed to, you know, three chords in the truth and <laughs> we're going to just let it roll. Right, right. Which I would, I feel must be considered a, a good thing. Oh, absolutely. You're heightening the art form, you're expanding the medium. Absolutely. 
And if you want people to watch, you know, I mean, it, it's, it goes to the, the industry question of like when are web series going to kick up to the next, next level in terms of viewership, in terms of whether it's destination viewing or, you know, just when is it going to get to the next level and what's going to be the, the thing that forces it to the next level? Is it going to come from the tech sector? Is it going to be an Apple TV? Is it going to be... Is it going to be these YouTube channels? What is it going to be that kicks it up to the next level so that we're not all still having the same conversations that we have been having for the past four or five years where it's, it's coming, it's coming, and it's not quite there. The, the eyeballs are bleeding over to the web, but the ad revenue is not following. So it makes it challenging. But from our standpoint, it's got to come from the content. The better the content is, the quicker it's going to happen. So the cause and effect is that the sponsors will respond, but the content has to raise its game. Yeah. We haven't seen yet, you know, with all the new fronts happening and then the television up front's about to happen, we haven't seen a sponsor come in and buy a show. They're still buying run of sight. They're buying, I want comedy. Right. Even with, you know, high level professionally produced on these YouTube channels where people are spending a lot of money to produce high level content, they're still coming in and buying, great, that's awesome, give me comedy, give me drama, give me DIY. When we see a sponsor come in and go, I want that show, I feel like that's really going to be a brand new day for web series because they're singling out that content as that is what I want my soap around. I want my Coke, my cola, my whatever around that because that's quality content and that's what I want my brand represented by. That's what happens in television. They buy American Idol. Right. And I think it's coming. We're just not quite there. And the festival's the bridge for yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, that's really what we do. We're this focal point to, and brands are involved as well. Um, but anybody that wants to create content or buy and distribute content, there is something for you at the New York Television Festival. And depending on how specific your needs are on the, on the buying side, we shape custom competitions for networks and studios. We're, we're doing the, the lifetime non-scripted competition right now. The, the unscripted pipeline, where Lifetime said exactly what they want. Boom. And nobody's going to look at those except for Lifetime. So Lifetime's going to be served up on a platter, 25 finalists or semi-finalists. They're going to pick five and give them some money to further develop it. And they're going to come back and then they're going to take one and go, all right, here's 10K. Let's go talk about a development deal and see if we can't work out a pilot.